What's up, dudes? So, I got this Blade 230S to... Regardless, it's a flying little fucking helicopter. Anyways, the batteries in are three cell lithium. Um, and it came with this little cheesy ass 800 milliamp charger. And at, at that rate, you know, some of these batteries, this is, it's not like you're getting 800 milliamps per cell. You're getting 800 milliamps, which is quite slow with, with these larger capacity batteries that I've been using in it. Of course, they get a lot bigger, but when you go and you look for these larger, you know, more powered three cell chargers, they're expensive. And I'm like, fuck, I could probably figure this out. So that's what we'll do. I'll show you guys how to make a, a good three, four, five, six, seven, whatever, however many cell charger. You know, you got to buy a couple things, but it's worth it. And uh, stay tuned through my cheesy ass intro and I'll show you guys how to build this. Alright, so this is to give you an idea of what we're going to be making. This was my little first, I guess you can call it a prototype, the first one I ever made. Uh, I definitely made mistakes. I'll show you those mistakes in just a minute. Um, I've added a fan because I haven't turned these TP46 charge. You can uh, control the charge current on these up to an amp. And I haven't changed them on these three. And I'll put a link in the description. You can go check out I, one of the other videos I did was on just the TP46. 56 and uh, one thing I explained in there were different resistor values for current um, but these haven't been changed so I knew that if these output 5 volts at 1 watt you know give or take they, they have some loss in them I was thinking I need at least a 5 watt DC to DC converter to run them um, that's when I had ordered these um, mass tech 5 watt DC to DC converters are 9 to 30 volts in 5 volt 1 amp out which was perfect for this and what I was doing, so I ordered a, a few, got them, loved them, ordered a bunch more. Um, but the mistake I'd made on this was that I ran the tracks, or I'm sorry, the traces, straight down before. So you see how I had to had to make a little correction here. They actually cross. So looking at the top side, it's on these mass techs right here. It's a positive on the left. V out positive and V out negative, and on the on the TP46 module one, it's negative on the left, positive on the right. So they really needed to cross, and I'll clarify that in a the schematic. These volt, these little volt uh, meter thingies are not a necessity at all. Actually, they probably take power you you don't want to give up, but um, I like to know that they're balanced and charging and going up and kind of when it's getting close to being full. Um, and I've added the fan because that charging at one amp, like I was about to say earlier before I got ADD, um, it cools these, these DC to DC converters get kind of warm, the, T, the TP46 modules get pretty warm. So I just try to add a little bit of cooling and air circulation because I could. The, the fan's hooked up on the top side, you know. Um, actually, I, I think that's, Yes, the fan's hooked up on the top side. It's a 12 volt fan. Um, so I figured this run, I'll run it, always run it 12 volts to 13.8, whatever, which is, we're, we're going to keep this around that because you can hook this up to your car battery. Kind of similar to these little E flight ones that come with these little battery clips right here to hook up to a car battery and charge your bird off that. But that's similar, similar to all this. Now, I've got the four pin connector right here for the three cell. Now we're going to just do the same sort of thing on this, this one for the day and do the five pins for the four cell and I will, when I actually build a new charge like this and a new circuit board and everything, we'll, um, we'll add the, uh, where's one of these? Hmm. We'll add on the uh, charge controller if necessary, because really you can you can hook up one of these charge controllers, and I'll show you that when we zoom in a minute and uh, do a similar thing. But um, this is a pretty cheap way. I think I got maybe six dollars at at the most parts in here, maybe 
depending on, I don't remember exactly how much these DC to DC converters um, cost, but, and, and the last thing I want to point out, and I'm, I'm not going to go too far into this because I don't want to confuse anyone, and I'm, I'm sure people, as people start seeing this, are going to notice that I've got three DC to DC converters here, and I've got three TP46s. I mean, it, technically, I can add another TP46 on right now and use the input supply or you know you know have a a voltage regulator 5 volt regulator over here or whatever and power this fourth one with the voltage regulator cuz it is still this power is still isolated from these three but it's it's a necessity that they're isolated from each other and the powers are each isolated from each other but with that said we're going to just use powering these DC to DC converters and you, you would need three if you're going to run it off you know simplicity and the 12 volts or you know you want a good range which this is a really good range but with that said uh, we'll go into a piece of paper and I'll show you guys exactly what this looks like on paper real quick before I, I move everything away um, I did want to show kind of how it looks and hopefully all you guys know about these um, multiplexing in these to where the numbers are difficult to see and they bounce around in, in the film. They're definitely hard to see if you don't cover them, but um, right here I've drained down this is about 74%. Uh, I've drained it down enough so we can charge it and um, when you plug it in, so right now I got all, all the red lights just kicked on, um, which means that they're charging. I've got the voltage at each cell showing there. 12, 4.12, 4.6, 4.9, and those will climb all the way up to 4.2 pretty much exactly. Uh, they'll bounce around closer to, you know, 19, one will say 20, 21, and some will say 19, 18, but they'll bounce around until, you know, it likes where it's at, and it, and all these lights will each turn blue. So, so I hope this is simple enough. Um, here's the, you know, these DC to DC converters sitting right here and this is their configuration as if they're standing just like this and as well as the TP4056 modules sitting vertical like that um, you can see uh, pretty simple I've got a power supply 9 to 30 volts on, on the top side of the VN on, on each of these DC to DC converters on the bottom still the same thing with the TP46 modules the positives across you know it's a little x so I've got all the positives running down and like I said you can pretty much see that on that on the wires right here Look right here the wires uh, are crossed now and the traces were vertical and you can see where I cut them so anyways uh, then you come in the TP46 module uh, these things are 12 for 10 pennies so I mean buy a lot when you get them because you You'd be surprised how often you mistakenly connect them and they fry. And um, and then also on that other video, you know, you could just use the little TP46 chips. Uh, you know, you don't get your protection there, but um, this is essentially what I use on that other video. So the last additional option would be these charge controller boards um, or battery management. So what they do is you hook each cell up zero which would be the black 4.2, 8.4, 12.6, which is each of those four pins on that other one. And then you charge it from the positive and negative right here. And this is saying it, it would take up to 20 amps. So pretty much you'd put the 12.4 um, 12, 12 or so volts uh, into this positive and this negative pin right here. And it would let them charge and it would control the balancing. But again, this is the way I'm making the video. This is what I had struggled with before, and I just wanted to make a nice, clear video on it. So, pause it, trace it, whatever you want. This is how it's connected. Um, each of this, the batteries, you know, positives, reds, and negatives, you know, positive on the right, negative on the left, and how they connect to each module in between the cells. So we'll go into the breadboard now, I'll show you how we got it breadboarded out. 
Okay, so I've done my best to try and make this as visually simple as it can be. This is a four cell battery I got when I was supposed to get a three cell one and um, this is a good good way for me to charge it. I haven't, I haven't adjusted any. These are all going to be at an amp um, though I'm not quite sure it's truly going to give me that and we could test that but I don't think we need to. Not in this video. Um, the next one we go into it we'll go into more specifics and when we actually build the supply and some circuitry for uh, controlling it and stuff. Um, so, like I said, visually I've tried to do my best. Um, red, blue, green, yellow, black in order. That's on here. And uh, actually I have your So they're on. Let me turn this light down. Maybe this will help. Now I don't know if, if you guys can see this, if it's clear on there, but I see flashing, 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 but this one's not flashing. I wonder why. I wonder if it's just a bad LED. Um, so I'm going to turn it off for a second and just go and plug these in order red to red just as the, the drawing showed that's exactly how I'm doing this one green yellow black Uh, huh. Fucking Murphy. This thing's not doing anything. God damn it. Figures, I should have tested that, but that's good you guys see this. Um, there's got to be something wrong in this module itself. So, excuse me. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to make you guys bear through me soldering some new legs onto another piece. Um, I got them all over the place, so um, let me let me solder these these leg sort of things onto this one, and and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I'm back. That red I have red legs on this one, so we're just gonna stuff this cocksucker in here and get back to where we were. Okay. Cross my fingers. It's all turns on this time so I don't look like an ass hat. Alright, there we go. Now the last one's showing it's green. Um, these cheap LED modules, uh, I'm assuming they got light issues because there shouldn't be a green light. They should turn, maybe it turns green when it's done but it doesn't make sense that this one would be green and none of the other ones. Oh, there it goes. It is a uh, my connection perfect okay so now we got everything charging uh, this one's getting just a little bit warm but the, the modules god dang it the modules aren't getting warm too warm yet MOSFET's getting a little warm. Or the, uh, I'm sorry, the, it's the protection. I think it is a MOSFET. Uh, I actually have a box of these things. I already had ordered them. Yeah, it's, and it's not getting super warm right now. And I don't think it's, You see what I just did? Should have bumped something else. Should have. Oh, huh. it's a loosey goosey breadboard. I like it, but I think I've been fucking it up, putting these big leads in too many holes. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a skill I have not acquired. All right. Well, I hope this is a little helpful. Um, it works. This is the gist of how to make it happen with just. 
you know, minimal components. So, hope you liked it. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, feel free to subscribe if you want to see other shit. I got a whole bunch of MOSFET drivers I'm going to start tearing into and, you know, doing a bunch of different boosting and bucking and with different types of MOSFET drivers or PWM drivers, depending. I got, I got quite a lot of them, different types. Been ordering for a long time. All right, so, cool. See you later.